Davis and Hinksman. What a highlight that was for the Colorado Buffaloes. You know, big win over UC Irvine is number 23 Colorado is 3-0. This is the guy that threw it. Voice of the bus, Mark Johnson. Welcome to the Buffalo Stampede. McKinley writes, you know, when, when that thing came out of your hand, I had no idea. I thought you were throwing it to the guy, you know, serving popcorn up in the stands or something. Um, that's just something that uh, me and T-Bay have been working on a lot <laughs> um, since freshman year, honestly. You know, y'all see a lot of alley from us. And um, when he gave me that look, he looks yeah. at me and throw me a little finger point, just throw it up there. But he's uh, always pointing up, or he wants you to throw it up there all anytime, the time, doesn't he? Anytime. But I knew that one was there because <laughs> I threw one in the first half to Ev, and I told yeah. T-Bay coming down the second half that um, it was there. And when I throw it to you, it's going to be there for a dunk. And um, it was just perfect timing. So a nice victory for the Buffaloes. They improved to 3-0. You know, on Saturday night, their home opener, they knocked off the University of San Diego, a team that had beaten the Buffs at two in a row. Yeah. That was a little bit of payback. And you guys didn't have yeah. the best start in that ball game, but a great finish for Colorado. Yeah, uh, it was some home jitters for a lot of us. You know, first game back here since last season. And, you know, the crowd was amazing. Um, we had a slow start in the first half, but surely picked it up in the second half. And um, like you said, that was a team that beat us the last since my freshman year. So um, we knew we needed to get that one. You know, I wonder a little bit, too, with that long trip coming back from China, great victory of Arizona State in the opener of the season. That kind of hangs, even as a young guy, that hangs with you for a little while. Maybe that was part of the slow start, do you think? Uh, yeah, I um, do like excuses because, well, he would be <laughs> mad at me. But, um, you know, a lot of us uh, couldn't sleep. You know, Shane and Lucas, my roommates, um, they were waking up at 3, 4 in the morning every day. So uh, it was hard to get back on schedule. But, um, you know, we did it. Uh, came out with the win. That's all that matter. First couple of ball games, Deshaun Schwartz was outstanding. Got 15 yeah. points each of the first two ball games. Talk a little bit about Deshaun. The offseason commitment he had that's kind of changed Man. him as a player, hasn't it? Man, Deshaun's uh, been big time. You know, his offseason was incredible. You know, he worked harder than almost anybody on the team. And, you know, every morning before practice, me and him are out here 45 minutes before practice yeah. uh, just trying to get better. Um, you know, I got him winning most improved player this year, so um, I think he's going to go get it. Yeah, he was outstanding. Buffalo's get that win over San Diego before the UC Irvine game. In fact, let's go back and hear some of those post-game comments from head coach Tad Boyle on Saturday night after the victory over the Toreros. You know, a workmanlike win, if you will. Uh, maybe in, in some respects an ugly win. But when you win by 18 at home and you you got a little bit of a sense of disappointment or we didn't play as well as we're capable of playing, I think that's a a sign of progress to some degree. Um, but that's kind of where we're at uh, because we know we have to be better than we were tonight to be the kind of team we want to be this year. And, and uh, turnovers are a good example of that. Free throw shooting is a good example of that. Um, you know, little things that uh, separate programs that are great or elite and programs that are good and solid. And uh, right now I think we're good and solid, but we're certainly not elite and we're, we're not where we want to be. But, you know, we'll take the win against a good San Diego team who's beaten us two years in a row. Um, they, they got great toughness, and I got a lot of respect for their coach and their program. And So we'll take it, and we'll move on. And There's head coach Tad Boyle after the victory on Saturday as the Buffs knock off San Diego. And uh, now they can come back and get the third victory of the season, 16-point win over UC Irvine. You walked up here before we sat down at set, and I said that felt like a tournament game, very high-level college basketball game against the Anteaters. Oh, yeah. Um, that's a team that won 31 games last year, uh, returned three of their starters, and uh, got some guys that can really score the ball. So um, we just dialed into the scouting report um, very deeply and um, guarded like no other. So, 16 points, a couple of rebounds, five assists, no turnovers in this ball game. You kind of take the turnover thing personally, don't oh, yeah. you? That, that was something you really wanted to work on coming into this season. Yeah, I struggled with that my freshman year. Sophomore year got a little better, but wasn't where I wanted to be. Um, and junior year, you know, I'm an upperclassman, um, leader of this team. Take that um, take that personal. So I just try to take care of the ball every game. Can I ask Tad here a few weeks ago, I said, tell me about McKinley as a player. What makes him better now as you enter your junior season? He said, Mark, he's always been good. He's always been a talented guy. He said, I think McKinley as a leader is trusting his teammates now, and that's going to make this team better. True statement? It is very true. You know, these guys um, – I've seen everybody work this summer. You know, I've seen the work they put in. You know, I know how many scores I have around me. So, um, you know, it's at the point where I could, I could lay off and let these guys go to work and do what I got to do when it's that time. So, um, I, mean, I trust my teammates. You know, I love these guys to death. So, What's nice about that is you're just kind of, you know, orchestrating the offense out there. And we saw in this game here tonight, you, you then in a couple of moments when things got a little stagnant, said, okay, I'll, I'll score a couple of buckets. Since you can kind of pick and choose your spots then, can't you? Yeah, I, I, do that. I try to do that to, to the best of my ability. I'll mm -hmm. pick and choose when I'm going to score, when I'm going to pass and get others involved. And 
you know, um, it's, it's certain times in East Highs where I feel like I got to get going and got to put my foot down, so I did that. Ken, I think as long as I've been covering college basketball, the sign of a, of a team that really kind of takes that next step is understanding the intensity has to be there every single night. Is this team taking that step? Yeah, um, you know, we take every every game uh, very hard, you know, like they're the number one team in the country. You know, we don't care who we play. You know, our last couple of years we took teams lightly and lost some non-conference games that we shouldn't have lost, so. I'm going to do our best not to do that this year. Well, they haven't done that. Next up, they can take on the Wyoming Cowboys on Sunday in Las Vegas. Good luck yes, in that ballgame. Appreciate it. All right, that's McKinley Wright. He and the Buffaloes are number 23 in the country and 3-0 after a big win over the Anteaters. Coming up next, here in the Stampede, we're going to talk some football. Quarterback Steven Montez will be on the show next. Fantastic. You know, at the end of training camp, I asked him this. And, Am I your dog yet? Not yet. We might have to wait on that one, Mark. <laughs> Still not his dog, but as I say all the time, he's my dog. That's quarterback Steven Montez. <laughs> well, there's a couple of previous episodes of the Buffalo Stampede television show where we had Steven Montez on. We're trying to get to the bottom of this. It took a long time. He's a fifth-year senior and a voice of the bus, Mark Johnson, the quarterback's here. You didn't see that, but we just had the two clips of me asking if I'm eventually going to be your dog. And you're a senior now. You've only got two games left. Yeah. The world is watching. They want to know. <sighs> I'm going to... I'm going to officially, officially induct you into the <laughs> Hall of Fame of being my dog, Mark. I'm very, I'm very excited, very honored to have you. Okay. All right. And, uh, and yeah, absolutely, you're, you're officially oh. my dog. So I appreciate having you. I appreciate you, uh, you uh, being so kind to me all, over all these years. <laughs> you know what? He likes me. He really likes me. It, it's finally happened. I'm, I'm officially his dog. No longer voice above. Stephen Montez <laughs> his dog now uh, here on the show. What would you do during the bye week? Um, I mean, I had I had a huge uh, breakfast spread on Sunday. It was fantastic. We had we had the whole nine yards. We had we had bacon. We had sausage. We had hash browns. We had toast points. We had eggs. We had OJ. We had milk. We had we had it all. Man, domesticated. Yep. Now, now did that uh, actually pass the nutrition staffs? Okay for that meal? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> it, it didn't really pass my budget, but it definitely passed the nutrition standards. I, I, but I think it ran me about sixty dollars. I, I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that. Well, you're a college kid. All right. Hey, what what you think about that Stanford game here a couple weeks ago? Man, I thought it was a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. We kind of it was kind of one of the first games where we kind of really came together as an entire team and as, yep. as a unit. And we played uh, like what Coach Tug calls complementary football, where the uh, the defense is feeding off the offense and the offense is feeding off the defense. And I thought I thought we looked really good, and I thought we had a lot of fun at the end of the day. That defense, and you know this, as young as that group has been, as many injuries, they've taken their barbs this season. That group came out and played, I thought. Tonight. Oh, they came out and played lights out, lights out. I mean, to to, uh, to hold that Stanford team like they did, and that they only held them to 13 points. Yep. I mean, that's just – that's absolutely phenomenal. I mean, if we can go out there and do that for these last two weeks, I mean, good things are going to happen for us. Yeah, good to pick up a win for the Colorado Buffaloes as they get set now for Washington coming to town this weekend. We got some news this past week, by the way, not just that I became his dog, but Ralphie is retiring. Ralphie 5 calling it quits. We're going to see her on Saturday when Washington's in town. But let's uh, hear from John Graves, the director of the Ralphie program. As the program manager for the Ralphie Live mascot program, making the decision to retire Ralphie 5, it, it was a tough decision, but ultimately it was an easy decision uh, because that is what was best for Ralphie 5 and is what also what Ralphie 5 wanted. Towards the end of this season here, uh, we started noticing a little bit change in her behavior uh, during our practice runs before each game. The cues that she responds based on what the handlers give her, she's almost forgetting some of those cues and, and starting to do things a little bit more on her own. Ralphie Five has always loved to run, and as her career has progressed here at the university over the past 12 seasons, her speed has just continuously increased. So we wanted to make sure we were doing everything right by Ralphie, which is why ultimately we made the decision to retire Ralphie Five. Ralphie Five is actually the second longest serving Ralphie here at the university. In total, she ran at 76 games over the course of 12 seasons. The football team's record when Ralphie leads them out onto the field was 31 and 34 here at Folsom and 39 and 37 for any game when Ralphie led them out onto the field. Through Ralphie Five's career, she has been a fantastic face, symbol, and icon for the university. Everyone knows Ralphie when she leads the football team out on the field. But outside of that, she's always served as the greatest symbol for the university. So Ralphie hasn't run the last couple of ball games. She's not going to run on Saturday when Washington comes to town. And that's kind of sad for the end of your career here. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I would, I would love to, uh, love to see Ralphie one, one more time just for, for senior night. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's Ral Ralphie's health comes before anything else. So <laughs> we want to make her sure she's healthy and make sure that she, uh, 
she finishes out her life uh, on, a, on a high note for sure. But there's something kind of symbiotic about the fact that you and Ralph here are going out at the same time. You know that? Yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's definitely a little weird. Me and Ralphie are, uh, in a lot of ways, very similar. <laughs> but, uh, big and hairy? Is that what you're getting at? Or what? I mean, I'm, I'm not so much hairy, but I uh, I enjoy long walks on Folsom. There you go. Um, I enjoy crowd noise. All right. And uh, does Ralphie eat fruit? <laughs> I'm sure she's a vegetarian. Yes. Well, I mean, I'm not. I'm not too big on vegetables, so I guess we're not. We're not that similar. <laughs> now, as your career's coming to an end here, you're on the verge of breaking the all-time, uh, you know, passing yards record, uh, touchdowns. Your next one will set a record. What do you think you've learned about yourself over the course of these five years? You've had your ups and downs. There's been con- there's been you know tough times, good times. What do you think you've learned about yourself? Yeah, I mean, I just. I think the, the the biggest thing that I've learned over these last four and a half years or so is that um, that you can always go a little bit farther. Sure. You can always go a little bit farther. Right when your right when your mind or your body starts to creep in and and kind of you ha- kind of have that doubt in the back of your mind. I mean, I've just learned that you can you can go a little bit farther than you think that you can go. So just keep pushing. Yeah, that's a great lesson for life, I think as well. How about this game on on Saturday with Washington coming to town? One final time at Folsom Field. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're excited about it. We're excited to play. All the seniors are, are, are really geared up to play. I mean, we're going to have a lot of family out here coming out and supporting. And, uh, and uh, I mean, it's a night game. It's going to be good weather. It shouldn't be too cold. So yep. come out and support, hang out. I mean, just get it rocking in Folsom for, uh, for one last time this season. Well, I tell you what, I've always loved calling your games. Thank I'm, you. I'm glad to be your dog now. Absolutely, right. Mark. I'm glad to have you. One of the greats in Colorado history has got one more at Folsom, of course, one after that at Utah. But on Saturday, the Huskies will be in town. It's Stephen Montez will be under center. We're going to take a time out here in the Stampede. We come back, we're talking soccer as the CU soccer team advanced to the second round of the NCAA tournament. Senior Taylor Korniak. Had a goal today, had an assist today. Taylor, how about today you had six different Buffaloes with an assist and six different Buffaloes with a goal. That has to look good moving into round two for distribution across the roster. Yeah, I'm really proud of everybody. Um, Cam, Jade, and Kyla all getting their first goals. Um, I'm really proud of them all. We came out really strong. Taylor, you've had a chance to play with a lot of different players through your time here at CU, but the freshman, Tessa Barton comes in and she provides a different look for you guys up top. How big was she in today's win? She was amazing today. She was really dynamic up top and she made a lot of great runs and just fought. She fought really hard today. I was really proud of her. Well, that's Taylor Kordiak, one of the captains for the Colorado women's soccer team after a 6-0 victory in the opening round of the NCAA tournament on Sunday at Prentice Field. Voice of the bus, Mark Johnson. Stephanie Zuniga joining us here for a couple of minutes. Another scene, another captain for the women's soccer team. 6-0. Not when, bad, right? When's the mercy rule coming to effect <laughs> like that? Huh? I mean, hey, Stanford won 15-0 in the first <laughs> round, so yeah, I, I don't think that. there's mercy. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a pretty good game. To talk a little, take us through the game a little bit in, in terms of uh, the victory over the Bears. Um, yeah, uh, we played them earlier this season, so they're somewhat of a familiar opponent. Um, obviously, they were coming back from a couple weekends on the road, so um, it was a, a rough stretch for them during sure. that time. But you know, them coming off from winning their conference, you know. They're they're coming off on high, you know. You so they're they're really into it. And with teams like that, you just don't take them lightly. You know, they, they come in just as strong, competing to win. So it's very important us, for us to be locked in and and be ready. To and, and the Buffs certainly were with that six nothing yeah. victory. By the way, the Bears have never scored a goal against the Colorado Buffalo. Is what nine or nine or ten previous matches. And and what's kind of interesting about the six goals, six goals by six different players and assist by six different players as well. I mean, the, the wealth was really spread around that. Oh, game. yeah. I mean, you know, it's important for everyone to get get on the scoring board. You know, it's fun and, and it's exciting, especially for, um, you know, players that are coming off the bench. You know, it's nice to see and nice to see them contribute and, 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 and continue that energy going moving forward once the subs come in. So it's really exciting. You know, it's it's impressive, in, honestly. In a game like that, you know, with six goals, you're thinking all about the offense, but obviously the defense was very good as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, shut out. You know, no goals scored. So our defense is incredible. You know, um, we, we make sure that, we're on our on our game and mm-hmm. and really you know make the game easy for JJ <laughs> or try to yeah, yeah yeah and she's been so outstanding this season so the Buffaloes are out of the second round of the NCAA tournament we're gonna take a quick break from talking soccer talking volleyball well kind of volleyball has got some royalty Miss Colorado is a Buffalo. Okay, so here joining us we have Emily Demure who has recently been crowned Miss Colorado USA. Emily, how does it feel? 
Wow, you know what? I love when people ask me that question. It feels great. It's an incredible honor to be here and to be crowned and to represent Colorado. How did you first get into doing pageants? How long have you been doing that for? My mom actually competed in pageants when she was younger for scholarship money for college. A lot of people don't know there's a lot of incredible opportunities for scholarship through pageantry. So that's actually where I started. When you went to Miss Colorado USA, what did that um, preparation look like in getting ready for the pageant? As you both know, I'm very <laughs> fortunate to have this volleyball program to make sure I'm physically in shape. We have an incredible weight training staff and volleyball practice just about every day. Um, but there's a lot of mental preparation that goes into it as well. Um, one of the things that I did that was incredibly helpful was before bed every night, I would FaceTime my Grammy and she would just ask me interview questions so that way I could oh be prepared God. for any questions that come <laughs> thrown at me. So now that you are Miss Colorado USA, um, what's next for you? What does your future look like? Well, I'm sure most of you know that I will be headed to the nationally televised Miss USA competition this summer, but I'm also going to be working with a lot of local charities, nonprofits, youth organizations um, around the state of Colorado, um, supporting some of the other state title holders as well. As your teammates, we are so proud of you and so happy for you, and we can't wait to see where this journey takes you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well, that's great to see for Emily Demure from the volleyball team. We continue with Stephanie Zuniga from the uh, soccer team after they get that 6 nothing win over the Bears in the opening round of the NCAA tournament. You know, we're going to talk to Maya Hollingshed coming up here in just a couple of minutes on, on the program. Uh, how about, I know you student athletes always support each other, but yeah. how about the women's basketball team coming out and, and bringing you guys some goodie bags? Oh, uh, with man, that, that was the best. You know, having them delay, well, because I was aware that they were supposed to leave at noon. Mm -hmm. And um, I've roomed with basketball players, so we're, we're really close. Or I'm, or I have a really good relationship sure. with, with the basketball team. But it was just such a nice gesture. You know, it's so nice to have them come out for a little bit, you know, even though they had to leave. But, you know, even the goodie bags that were in the locker room for us and, and the signs that they made us was really cool, really nice of them. And, you know, like we say, we always feed off that energy. And yeah. it's so important for us to have, you know, student athletes and just the community come out and support. You know, it means so much to us. And, and we feed off of it. So it was, it was amazing, you know, so much love. Yeah, th yeah, there's a lot of that between those two. I know Katie Nixon and some of the guys in the football yeah. team are always coming and supporting yeah, you guys always, as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's, it's really nice, like I said, just to, to see uh, the, the support from all student athletes. You know, track was out there as yep. well. Yep. Um, <laughs> basketball, um, you know, football, like you said. So it's just awesome, you know, because like, like we said, we all support each other and we all attend each other's games and stuff. So, that yeah. is kind of neat. Stephanie walks in here, the track team was, uh, I mean, it was almost like they started cheering for you. Yeah, there, exactly. So, yeah. A lot of love between the different sports teams <laughs> yeah. here. All right, you're heading to take on uh, a number one seed, the number two mm -hmm. seed in the entire tournament, North Carolina at Chapel Hill coming up on Friday at 4 o'clock Mountain Time. Give us a thought or two about that match. We're ready. Yeah. You know, at, at this point, you know, we're going to go in there, play our game, have fun, and, and play play our hearts out. You know, at this point, it's going to be such a good atmosphere. And, and like I said, just not so long ago, energy is everything and the yeah. atmosphere is everything. You know, although they're, it's home for them, but it, it's it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting, and, and we're ready. We're ready to just go and have fun and, and make it happen, I like see what it. we can well, do. She's been through these wars before as a senior, so you know it's all about the intensity, and you're yeah. dialed in this time of year. Well, good luck. Thank you. All Thank right. you. Stephanie Zuniga, she and the Buffaloes will take on North Carolina again Friday, second round of the NCAA tournament at 4 o'clock Mountain Time in Chapel Hill. Coming up next, as we mentioned, Maya Hollingshed from the 3-0 women's basketball team up next here in the Stampede. Well, some great highlights from a buff basketball win for the CU women sitting at 3-0 and on the season. Those were highlights with a win over the Wisconsin Badgers out of the Big Ten. Boys to the boss, Mark Johnson, Maya Hollingshed joining us here for a couple of minutes. Boy, you ladies are rolling right now, huh? Yeah, we are. We're yeah. 3 and right now. Let's go back and talk about that Wisconsin game. You know, that, that's one of those ball games that looks really good on paper because, you know, it's another Power 5 team coming out of the Big Ten. But... I thought you guys really controlled that ball game from start to finish, didn't you? Yeah, from the uh, from the start, we said if we dominate the glass and do the things that we are in control of, we will have a good game. And so we went out there and we came out with a lot of energy in the first few plays. We started off very good offensively and defensively, so I think that really set the tone for the rest of the game, and that really set us over the top for the. What for is this see, through through three games right now? What is this team doing very well? Um, I think it's like we're not doing anything outside of what we know how to do, mm. and so we're just playing in the roles of like what we've been practicing every day and the things that we we really teach on and going back to the basics and the fundamentals of it, uh, playing defense and then executing our offense, so I think that really helps. A little bit of a change, you think about, you know, Lexi and Kennedy and how long they were around here. So you take those kind of leaders out of this team, 
I would imagine through training camp, this had to be a, a little bit of a, a feeling out process yeah, for the was. players. Yeah, it this definitely team. was. Just, yeah. a, just because we came in with a lot more freshmen and sure. we're a younger group than we were even last year, so I think it was just like a, just a learning process overall. So we just basically started over from um, from the jump and just started back over, just rebuilding our brand, our brand and our culture. So where does the leadership come from this season? Uh, I think the leadership really comes from our, our lone senior, mm -hmm. Vanessa, and then just the upperclassmen that's been here and that, that has the experience of so myself, Aubrey, Annika, just those people that's been around the program and that knows what the coaches are expecting and just knowing how to play and how to show up. What's changed for you now, now that you're you're one of the leaders, one yeah. of the veterans <laughs> on the team, yes, right? Am, yes. More is expected of you. Yes, um, I think just being I don't know. We have talks all the time, just keeping it simple and just like when I'm when I'm feeling good and I'm playing good, then I just have a good game. So I just try to go out there and just have a good game. Every yeah, game. She's had a couple of good games. <laughs> just a button loser now 3-0. and By the way, we just had Veterans Day, of course, across the United States. And the CU Athletic Department had a great program where they went out and dropped off some wonderful items to local veterans. So we're here today, uh, we're out in the local uh, community delivering OHT Hero Boxes. Worked with Veterans Affairs on campus to identify some very deserving veterans um, who are obviously huge Buffs fans. My name is JT Galloway, I work with CU Athletics, how are you? Chip is here to present you with a Hero Box. Full of some CU's. Wow! I'm speechless. I'm speechless. This is too cool, wow. So Chip just presented a OHT Hero Box to Jim Moore. Uh, Jim was a captain in the Army for a number of years, served in Vietnam. Um, he and his wife, Mariana, have been buff season ticket holders since 1976. It's a, I never thought it would happen. The buffs with this package and chip, the buff flag flies out on our garage before every home game. We get excited for every game. We've partnered with OHT, Operation Hat Trick, which is an amazing organization. Donate the proceeds back to wounded warriors to help them and their families uh, with their various uh, disabilities. It's great to get out and um, really thank some of these people for what they've done for our country. Well, a great program there by the CU Athletic Department on Veterans Day. We continue talking women's basketball here with Maya Hollingshed. As the Buff women are sitting at 3-0 and on their way to Colorado State, by the way, on Friday. You were just up, though. You had to make that trip all the way up to Laramie, Wyoming via bus and picked up. That's not an easy place to go and get a victory, it really though, is isn't. it? It's really loud in there. It's a lot of people that come and support the uh, program. Um, they're really a tough team, scrappy team. So we had to uh, fight that one out and just come out of Wyoming with a win. Well, how about the young players in this team? Who, who's catching your eye so far that's uh, played um, well? Jalen right now. Yeah. She's a uh, point guard right now. She's she's really fast, and I think that, that can really help push our tempo and our pace and transition that we're trying to execute in our offense. So her speed is like unlike no other. And like you, it's really unguardable at times. Like you really can't catch up. So I think that's really one of her, her biggest tools that she has in her box right now. You know, one thing about this spot as well, and I've talked with Coach Jared Payne about this, that there's a balance to it. it and is. so defenses aren't keying on one. I mean, you can have a big ball game, or Q can have a big ball game, or Peanut, or anybody, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just like we have a lot of depth this year, and I feel like that's the most key part. I think last year we were focused on, like, if Lex or Ken wasn't really having a big game, we were really like, who else was going to be show up to score? But this year we have, like, anybody could go for double digits or double figures, and the whole team could be in double figures. So it's really a lot of depth, and I think that's the, the right. best part. How about on Friday now? you got to go up to Fort Collins, yes. Mobile Arena, yes. big rivalry game with Colorado State. You yep. know what this means by yep. now, right? It's, it's the rivalry game. We, beating Colorado State is, like, the biggest one on our schedule. Like, we had that one circled. So being CSU at their place is definitely going to be a great, great victory if you can get that one out. Yeah, it's always a tough place to play. You know, that's one of those where I can't imagine that J.R. Payne's going to have to say too much to you in a pregame, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, she is. She's going to get us fired up and get us hyped, though. But yeah. we're Just roll the ball out. You let us know what's going on <laughs> yeah, here, right? Yeah, she's, she's, she's good with that. So she's, she's going to help us with that one. All good right. Program. Well, keep up the good work and get Thank a win you. on Friday. Thank you. I will. All right. That's Maya Holly Shed. She and the CU women heading up to Fort Collins to take on Colorado State on Friday night. And don't forget Saturday, senior day game for the Buffaloes against Washington at Folsom Field. That's a late one. It's an 8 o'clock kickoff. That'll wrap up this week's Buffalo Stampede. I'm Voice of the West, Mark Johnson. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you next time.